Hey guys, time for Q&A Wednesday. You guys sent your questions in to me today. I took uh, the best questions I could find on the list. I compiled them into this convenient form known as paper. And I'm going to read off your questions, guys, and I'm going to give you my best answer right off the cuff here. So before I get into that, before I get into this, guys, I encourage you to stick around to the end of this video. Find out how you can reach me with your questions and or comments. So let's get into the questions here. The first question is from Paul. Um, Paul says, for guys with a bit of a gut, does cutting to a leaner state prior to a bulk give better results? I've heard that this gives you a better base to work from, and calorie fat partitioning was mentioned something along the lines of making your body better at building muscle and storing less fat. What is my opinion on that? I think this theory, um, whatever it is, the, the concept is that if you lose fat first, that your body will be better, somehow better at building muscle and storing less fat. Um, after you come off of a cut, after you come off of a cut, your body's going to be, um, you know, it's been in a period where you're losing fat. And when you start eating, it's going to be naturally more anabolic. It's going to want to soak up those calories. So generally, you know, some of the, some of the science that I've read shows that um, your body can be more anabolic after a cut. But is it going to, you know, store less fat? Um, well, let me explain this the best I can. From... My, from what I've read, the body kind of works in two-week cycles, okay? When you take in a lot of extra calories, it takes a while for the body to reach full-blown fat storage mode. So during that time, you're, you're adding a little bit more muscle than normal, and, but after that kind of a two-week period, and this is just a rough, rough ballpark, after that kind of two-week period, you kind of reach that full-blown fat storage mode. This is when you're eating a lot of extra calories. So the point here is that the same goes, um, the same goes for uh, um, a cut. You know, when you first start cutting, it takes a while for that body, a couple weeks for that body to get in full-blown um, uh, fat burning mode. So the point here is that cuts and bulks and the hormonal stuff and all that kind of stuff, it evens out in the end. So really my advice to you is if, um, you know, over the long run, this stuff isn't going to make any difference. This, should I cut fat before building muscle, et cetera, et cetera. What is going to make a difference is your goals. If any of you are worried about the amount of fat you're carrying around right now and you're just getting the muscle building process, I recommend that you just take an 8 to 12 week period, do a cut, knock off those, uh, you know, 15 to 20 pounds of fat or whatever it is, and get on the ball, get on a long-term lean ball. Um, you know, most of you are younger guys. You're not going to gain a lot of fat to begin with if you're on a long-term lean bulk. So if you are worried about the fat, if it bothers you, if you wake up every day and look down and go, ah, that's not what I want, then spend two to three months on a cutting diet, get some of that fat off, and then commit to a long-term bulk. So to answer Paul's question, um, you know, this hormonal stuff and, uh, you know, w if you cut fat first, will you be more anabolic? For a very short period of time, from how I understand it, for a very short period of time, it's nothing to be concerned about. I can tell you from experience that after a cut, I can gain fat back really, really quick. So it's more a matter of, um, of uh, you know, just monitoring your calorie intake, being more precise, and uh, so on and so forth. So... Guys, the next question we have, and this is going to be a long video, so hang in there, is from, and excuse me if I get your names wrong, Korsiach, C-O-R-C-I-O-C-H. Um, he says, do you find much value in overload training, such as with a slingshot for the bench press or similar pieces uh, that a trainee might use uh, to utilize to use more weight raw? Yes, I do. I love the slingshot. Um, I also love chains. I, I use chains a lot in my training because they overload the lockout on bench press. They overload the lockout on squats. They overload the lockout on deadlifts. So I like chains for those three lifts. Um, 
I love, love, love overloading my bench press with the slingshot. I use it on every, every set. Um, it also, because I'm older, I have, I don't have the shoulders I once did. So the slingshot also helps me keep my sh shoulders healthy. So, for you younger guys who are more intermediate level lifters, and I, I don't remember, I, I don't recommend overloading for the beginners or, or early intermediates, but intermediate level lifters. You can use this, uh, you know, I would recommend using it, uh, you know, cycling your training, like doing regular bench volume and then maybe next week, um, you know, doing some overload work or in the same workout, do your regular work and then, and then uh, you know, do overload work or build up and do overload work with a slingshot on bench and then drop down and do raw work without the slingshot. You just want to get a little bit of both and the same would go for squats and deadlifts. I have found, though, when I squat too much with chains, that um, you know, I, I, that sinking in the hole, it feels so light that uh, you know, uh, I found that I really have to balance, you know, using assistance devices or overload devices with regular training, so I get a good balance. So you want to attack both. If you just just do chains, your body's going to adapt to that kind of method. If you just do slingshot. So use both, guys. Use both. And yes, they're definitely beneficial. Whenever you can add more weight to the bar, more resistance to the bar, you're going to be working your central nervous system. You're going to be increasing your, your tendons, your, your joint strength, all that kind of good stuff. So there's really no downside to that. All right, guys. Next question here is from John Paul. John Paul says, I have high blood pressure. It runs in my family. But when I take my meds and eat right, I seem to be able to keep it under control. I'm thinking about getting into powerlifting and, after, and have already uh, been weight training for two and a half years. What are your thoughts on being a powerlifter who has to manage high blood pressure? Um, from my experience, and I've been lifting for 28 years and involved with fitness for 38 years, exercise in general, any form, running, lifting weights, whatever, it always drives my vitals down, like my blood pressure. It, it makes my blood pressure much better. So, you know, whatever, if you have high blood pressure, whatever, um, you know, my biggest recommendation is move, move, move. It'll be great for your blood, blood pressure. It'll only help your blood pressure. So with that said, if you want to get into powerlifting, absolutely get into powerlifting. Do a form of exercise you enjoy. If you want to get into powerlifting, you can be very successful. I will advise, and I'm not a doctor, I just play one on the YouTube kids. I will advise if you do have blood pressure that I strongly consider you, or I strongly recommend you consider trying a lower carb diet for a month. A lower carb diet where you eat meats, and not lean, not just lean meats kids, lean uh, meats with fat, you know, regular beef, you don't have to get the lean beef, eggs, um, whatever. Um, and fruits and vegetables, make that your staple. Get rid of your white sugar, your white flour, um, you know, back off from the carbs, back off from the, the rice, back off from the bread. Um, try a low carb diet for a month and then go have your blood pressure checked and just see, just see how it is. Just see. Give it a month test, month test. This is outside the realm of your question, but if you do have high blood pressure, I'd love to see you give a low carb diet a test for one month. During that period of time, don't try to lose weight. Just eat until you're full. Eat until satiety, until you're, you're full and see what that does for your blood pressure. It might be something you want to try, regardless of if your goals are powerlifting, muscle building, or just overall health. So guys, moving on to the next question here. It is from Magnus. Magnus says, how come I have a hard time falling asleep on the days I work out? I lift in the morning, I go to bed dead tired at about 10 o'clock, but it takes me three hours to fall asleep. Well, there could be any number of reasons, and I don't know you personally, and I don't know your life situations. Um, there could be stress. There could be a fat deficiency in your diet. Sometimes when we don't eat enough fat, um, it makes it harder for us to sleep at night. Um, you could be taking a lot of caffeine. You could be taking a lot of stimulants in your pre-workouts. Um, you could be going to bed hungry. When we go to bed hungry, our body uh, is in that animal mode, it's in that primal mode where we want to go prowl and look for food. So I don't know the cost for you, whether it's stress, whether it's dietary, whether it's stimulants or whatever. 
I, I would recommend dropping the stimulants, stimulants if you're on caffeine. If you're on, oops, hold on, kids. If you're on caffeine, um, slowly back that down. Like if you, you know, use this much caffeine a day in your coffee or so, just back it down a little bit, a little, 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 little bit every day until you get to zero. Get off the caffeine. Um, I also recommend, I would recommend for you guys who have a hard time sleeping before, uh, sleeping at night, to have a semi-large meal or two meals later in the evening, like your main dinner at 5 to 6 o'clock, and then about 8.30. I want you to eat a good amount of calories, like about 800 again, um, and make sure you have some fats in there. This will only help you sleep, or at least I want you to give it a try. It, it's generally a good, uh, good uh good uh, remedy for those of you that can't sleep eating more at night. When you eat big meals, what happens? We tend to just zonk out or want to take a nap, so that can only help. There are also some sleep aids on the uh, market that I have tried that have had some, uh, some good benefits. I believe Bulletproof from Muscle Farm, and there's a product called Fenabut, I believe, a supplement called Fenabut, so those might be of interest to you. Good luck. All right, guys, moving on. This is from Paulo. Paulo says, good strength program for increasing pull-ups and chin-ups. What's a good program for increasing pull-ups and chin-ups? All right, here's the deal. If you can do one pull-up, there's hope for you to do two pull-ups. If you can do two pull-ups, there's hope for you to do three pull-ups. So what I would like you to do and this is going to sound extreme, but this is just a short-term specialization type program, okay? What I would like for you to do is five days a week. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, you can take a rest on the weekend. Go into the gym, and no matter how many pull-ups you can do per set, I want you to do 20 total pull-ups on that day. If it's one rep, and that's all you can do, fine. Rest, do another rep, rest. Do another rep until you can do 20. If you really, really stink at pull-ups, maybe it's only 10 reps. Try to just do 10 reps a day. But go into the gym after your other workouts are done, after your cardio is done, try to do pull-ups. However you can, how many ever sets it takes, try to do 10 or 20. When you can get to that level, um, you know, keep trying to increase your reps per set. And then once, once you're able to hit three or four or five reps per set, keep working. Keep working until you get six, seven, eight reps per set. That is the, the, main, the main aspect I want you to focus on if your pull-ups stink. Just go in and try to hit that total number of reps per day, five days a week. This is a specialization program. Once you can get the six, seven pull-ups, um, you know, five, six, seven pull-ups per set, then you can just insert them in your muscle building program as normal guys as normal but during this time you can also during your normal back workouts do inverted rows that's where you put a bar in a squat rack and you put your feet elevated and you pull up it's like an assisted pull up those are great for working your pull up strength they're much better for you than lat pull downs lat pull downs generally don't have any impact on my pull or my pull up power I also want you to do one arm dumbbell rows and get those as strong as possible. So that's my recommendation for a specialized pull-up program. All right, guys, moving on. A uh, question from Nain Kanwar. It says, hey, bearded beast, I'm having trouble exerting force through my heels while squatting. I've uh, invested in weightlifting shoes as well. I'm a high bar squatter. Um, he gives us stats. He's trying to gain strength and size. So he does a full body work. He says he could please suggest some advice on stance. He, he's, trying to, he's trying to drive through his heels. Here's what I want you to do, uh, Nane. I want you to, instead of thinking of driving through your heels, because when you, when you think of pushing down, when you, when you think of pushing down, your upper body can be doing whatever because you're so focused on, on your heels. When you, when you stand up, get your weight on your heels. Stay tight during your descent. Keep your death grip on the bar. Keep your arms and back tight as you descend. And you're going to have your weight on your heels. And when you come up, instead of trying to, <clears throat> instead of trying to think about pushing your heels into the ground, I want you to think about standing up and driving your shoulders into the bar and driving your head up, okay? Think about standing up. That's a more natural movement. When uh, we, 
we know how to stand up. When we try to stand up, the body aligns properly. When we try to push our heels down, all kinds of crazy things can happen like this. So standing up some more natural movement. So stay tight during your descent with your weight on, you know, on, on your heels. When you come up, think about standing up and driving those shoulders into your bar. When you're about halfway through that lockout, boom, push your hips forward and uh, assist that stand-up process. That's my best advice for the squatting issue you have. All right, next question is from Marking Beast Blood. Um, he says, could high SGPT enzymes be caused from lifting? Unfortunately, uh, Amigo, I have no idea what that means. I've heard a lot of things in my life, being an old, hairy, ugly guy, but I've never heard of that, so sorry. I cannot answer that question for you. He did have, a, a Marking had a, another question. said, how to increase grip strength with no fancy equipment. Got a great idea, got a great idea for increasing grip strength. Look at these forearms, kids. Forearms, forearms. My forearms are almost bigger than my, my biceps. Grip strength. Okay, go into a squat rack, mark it, marking, go into a squat rack with a barbell. You want to set the pins um, about, you know, uh, let's see, about that high. Um, you want to be able to hold the barbell and have the pins, you know, about six, in six inches below the barbell when you're standing up to catch the barbell if it slips. You don't want the barbell falling to the ground. You'll get kicked out of the gym, especially if it's Planet Fitness Kids. So anyway, put a barbell in a squat rack. Stand up using a double overhand grip um, like you're about to shrug with that barbell, but just hold it. Start with 185 pounds, okay? Try to hold that for 60 seconds. Rest for two minutes. Get the 185 pounds again. Double overhand grip. And uh, stand up with it. Just try to hold that for 60 seconds, okay? What you want to do is you want to get three sets of 60 second static holds with that barbell. It's a great, simple way to increase strength, grip strength. Now, if you are able to do three sets of 60 seconds on these static barbell holds with whatever weight you're using, go to the gym the next time, add five pounds, okay? Don't take big jumps, just take small jumps. Say you started at 180, 185, and you're able to hold those for three sets of 60 seconds. The next time you go in, just add five pounds, um, and then slowly progress that way. And before you know it, heck, you might be up to 400 pounds for static grip, static holds this. If you can just increase every time, every time by a few seconds, your holding power, your holding duration, this isn't going to increase your grip strength. It's nothing fancy, but it works. Progression, progression, progression. Try to improve your time every time you're in there doing these static holds. When you can get the three sets of 60 seconds on the static holds, add weight. That would be a good way to increase your grip strength. All right, next question. Big Tobes says, how to deload after Smoloff and Smoloff Jr.? All right, um, if you run a big uh, specialization program like this, the first thing you want to do when you're done and you've tested your one rep max is just take a light week. When, if I ran that type of program, honestly, I would take a week completely off and just eat a bunch of food and recover. Um, if, you know, a lot, when I go into a powerlifting meet and I take a week off, I actually get stronger. It's called dual factor theory, guys. It's dual factor theory. When you're lifting, you, uh, you are improving your strength levels, but if you push close to overtraining, you're also increasing your fatigue levels. So the higher your fatigue, sometimes you can get so fatigued that your strength levels can't shine. So on a specialization program like Smoloff, your strength levels are here, but at the end of the program, your fatigue is really high. So if you take a week off, your fatigue is going to improve, and that will allow more of your strength to shine. Okay? Does that make sense? So you can, you can take a complete week off after small off, come back and actually be stronger. That's the way the theory works. It's worked for me going into powerlifting meets. I would push so close to overtraining um, by for, for, you know do, using frequent squatting, and then I'd take that week off and I'd go back in the gym and I would just be super strong. So that's a good option. That's worth trying. It's not magic. It might not work for you, but it's worth trying. Um, 
you also can go in, my other uh, deload uh, recommendations are um, to use 60% of the volume you've used previously or 60% of the weight. So if you're doing three sets of 10 on something with 200 pounds, you could cut back the volume and do, you know, by, by 40% and do three sets of six with the same weight. So that's a volume decrease. You're decreasing the reps by 40%. Or you could decrease the weight and stick to three, three sets of 10 reps with uh, a 40% decrease of 120 pounds. So you can also work your deload like that, decreasing the volume or the weight by 40% in the off weeks. All right, next question, guys, is from Jonathan Hines. It says, bearded, beastly, bend the bar, dude. That would be me. Um, I, when I bench press, I feel like my arms are getting lots of extra work. How can I ensue proper form to get the best chest workout possible? Okay, here's the thing. Just because when you're benching, you feel your arms working doesn't mean you aren't building chest strength. Doesn't build you aren't, doesn't mean you're not building chest size. We all have weaknesses. We all have different feel. Like when I squat, I only feel my hamstrings. Yet, yet, guys, my quadriceps are monstrous, monstrous. So when I squat, I only feel my hamstrings, but my quads are huge. When I bench press. I only feel my chest, but my triceps are huge, guys. My triceps are one of my largest body parts. So my point here is what you feel in a workout does not matter much. It doesn't mean that a muscle isn't working. It doesn't mean it's not growing. It doesn't mean your form is bad. On that exercise, you want to continue to get as strong as possible using progressive resistance. And you also want to check the internet, you know, and work on your form, try to improve your form. But don't panic on bench if you can only feel your triceps. Don't panic on squats if you can only feel your hamstrings. Don't panic on deadlifts if you can only feel your lower back. These exercises, what you feel isn't truth, okay? It's not always truth. It doesn't, you just might have one muscle group that gets more sore than the others. That doesn't mean the other body parts are not working and not growing. So relax, trust the process, get every muscle group from here to your toes as strong as possible. In three, four years, you're going to be a house if you're eating plenty of food. So don't worry about it, Jonathan. All right, last page of questions, guys. It's, uh, here we go. This is from the JMAG. Sorry, my nose itches tonight. My nose itches. Get that out of the system, kids. Uh, this is from the JMAG. What long-term programs, training protocols would you recommend for a natural intermediate power lifter? Um, and he's naming stuff like Smolov, Shiko, Q, 531, Madcow, blah, blah, blah. Um, for an intermediate, I don't like minimalistic training, okay? Here's why. And when I say minimalistic, I'm like mad cow for long periods of time. I might sound like a heretic. I might sound like a heretic. But programs like mad cow tend to have squats, bench, deads. That's it. Okay? They're good programs. I'm not saying they won't work. But what I like, what I like are simple upper, lower splits, training four days a week. Okay? Um, and I like you to be working every major muscle group because as an intermediate, what I have found, and I have achieved close to an 800 deadlift raw at age 46, close to a 700 squat raw at age 46, and about a 450 bench press at age 46. So I've, I've gotten close to that, that elite, 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 elite level. Only a, less than 100 guys in the history of the sport have hit a 2,000 pound raw total. I got close to that this year, guys. So I didn't quite achieve it. But anyway, I'm not here to toot my own horn. What I'm saying is, um, what I have learned about strength training is that it's beneficial to get every muscle group from head to toe as strong as possible. So therefore, to do that, you have to work each muscle group each week. That is my plan. That is my philosophy. I want you to hammer your quads and get them as strong as possible. I want you to hammer your traps and get them as strong as possible, your biceps, your calves, everything. So. Mad cow, yes, do it if it, were, if it works for you, stick with it. It's a good program. It'll work if you work it hard. But my program for intermediates, my advice for intermediates is find an upper-lower split 
and work it, you know, make sure you structure in every possible muscle group, working in standard hypertrophy ranges of, you know, 5 to 10, 12 reps per, um, per set. That's your assistance work. Get those as strong as possible, your traps, your quads, your hands, everything. And, um, you know, the basic structure for the upper lower for an intermediate, I'd like to see you do a heavy squat day, and I'd like to see you do a rep squat day. On the heavy squat day, you could do work up and do doubles or triples, um, you know, uh, maybe five sets of three or five sets of two or four sets of two or four sets of, of three reps and just slowly increase weight, you know, as uh, those sets feel manageable. That's a heavy day. On your rep day, I'd like to see you do three to four sets of either pause squats or regular squats of six to ten reps. So squats, you, um, you have a heavy day and you have a rep day. I'd like to see you do that for bench press as well, a heavy day and a rep day. So these are upper lowers. Deadlifts on your... Um, your rep day for squats, I'd like you to do deadlifts first. I don't like people to overwork deadlifts. Um, people people usually train above 90% on deadlifts, which I don't think is beneficial for most people. And they like to do too many reps. So on deadlifts, I would do a 3x3, three three, a simple 3x3, three three, or a simple 3x5, and add weight when those rep ranges feel um, you know, decent. So, four-day upper-lower split, heavy squat day, um, rep squat day. On your rep squat day, do deadlifts first. And on, on your upper body days, heavy bench day, heavy bench day, and uh, rep bench day. And your heavy days, like I said, can be like four sets of two, four sets of three reps on bench and squats. And your rep work on uh, squats and bench press could be like three or four or five sets of six to ten reps. So that's a good bare bones, basic uh, program the best I can kind of outlay here on the worldwide inner tubes in short notice. Um, <clears throat> next question here, guys, is from MBNTT123. He says, What do you think about high frequency training like the Bulgarian method? MBN, you have come to the right guy. I spent the last three years, last three years, training high frequency. Um, <clears throat> And he's asking particularly for a natural lifter. I've spent the last three years doing this. It added an incredible, incredible amount of strength. But I was a late, <clears throat> late intermediate lifter. I am not sold, <clears throat> excuse me, on squatting six, seven days a week. I know, um, you know, some of the bras guys do it. That's fine. It works. I have found that for me, high frequency squatting two to three times a week but going in to try to do the uh, heavy single for the day. What I felt like, okay, guys, you got to really be in tune with your body. I would go in on squats and bench press and work up to a heavy single for the day and then maybe do back off sets of doubles and triples after that. Um, you can do this on squat and, squat and bench. You can do it two times a week or three times a week. I recommend two to three times a week on squats and for bench press about two times a week. That's really about all you need. I think for my opinion is when it comes to frequency training, this is about all you're going to really need. As far as deadlifts, I don't like high frequency deadlifts. I've tried those guys. I've tried them for many, many years. I have found that for deadlifts, it worked well for me to work for one week to do a heavy, heavy set where I worked up, you know, about 85, 85 to 88% of my one rep max. I would just go as for many reps as possible. The next week I would do like a low rack pose. And then the next week I would uh, do like low rack pulls and power shrub combinations. So I would only really, really heavy floor pull like every second or third week. But I would do really heavy low rack pulls on the off week. So high frequency training, it can seem very appealing, guys. You, but the main thing is you want to ease into this slowly. Um, don't just jump into trying to do your ha your heavy daily single right off the bat. You got to learn how this works, guys. You got to learn how this works. You got to listen to your body. Try to build into squatting two to three times a week, um, and I guarantee if you work if you learn to work towards those heavy singles on those days, just heavy daily single. That means whatever you can do that day safely and with good form that that's probably going to be all you really need for, for your goals. Um, it, it can be mentally, mentally, mentally challenging to go in there and squat uh, for a, you know, a heavy single each day. So 
just take some time. Try to do it two to three times a week. And I, again, I only recommend this for intermediate, late intermediate types of lifters. So it can be viable, but just don't try to rush in there and do it six, seven times a week. If you're going to get into the heavy or high frequency training, go slow. Listen to your body and try to try to spend a year doing two to three squat sessions uh, a week before you. Uh, and then decide for yourself after that year, after that six months, if you really need more. Odds are you probably won't. You probably won't. All right, guys. Next question. We're getting to an end here, so hang on, guys. It is from Stricken. Um, Stricken Big Ed. He says, I have to take six weeks off training following a minor surgery. Will I lose strength and muscle during this time? Any tips for returning to the gym and eating myself back into the training? Um, yes, you will lose strength and muscle during this time. You will. But the good news is I've done this many times. I've had to take times off from training when I was in basic training or when life stuff came up or whatever. The good news is, the bad news is you will lose some strength and muscle. The good news is during those periods when I come back, I get really strong and I regain that size really, really quickly. So I don't recommend any unusual diet, just your normal lean bulking diet. But just give it two weeks or two months, two to three months. I, I'm pretty confident you will have most of your strength and a good portion of you, uh, most of that size back. So don't worry about it. It comes back quickly after you've already had it. Trust me, it does. I will say that first week back in the gym, just take it half speed, okay? Take it half speed. Your body's broke up. Your body hasn't been training a while. Don't kill it. Um, you know, just take it easy, get a good feel for the routine, and get through this, that soreness of the first week, and then start to increase your intensity again. All right, guys, here we go. Another question. This is from Farid. How can you tell how much exercise is too much for you? You can tell if you're exercising too much if you wake up after a good night's sleep and you feel like, you know, crap. Um, if you just feel like you, you're going through the days and you're just like, oh, I just can't wake up or I just have no energy. Um, if you just don't seem to be recovering, that's really the big thing. That's really the big thing. Or if you want to sleep like 16 hours a day. Uh, when I was building muscle my first two or three years, I would go lift for an hour, 15 minutes or whatever it was. I would then go play basketball right after I was done. And then I'd run later in the day and play basketball as well. So if you're a highly active individual who's trying to build muscle, there's one thing I really recommend. That's buying a shovel, filling it with food, and just keep shoveling it into your mouth. Um, that'll help with recovery. <clears throat> that'll, that'll help a lot with recovery. But you'll know when you're exercising too much. I, I've rarely hit that stage in life. Uh, I actually feel it right now where I've been doing some challenges uh, with the guys on my forum. Link below, link below. Um, and uh, we've been trying to do a thousand minutes of cardio in January, and uh, I did 150 deadlift reps in three hours in one session. And I woke up and I'm like, oh my God, I feel uh, I need, you know, I knew I needed a couple days recovery. So that's really when you know you need recovery, when you know you need rest, then take the rest. That's how you know you're exercising too much. Listen to your body, rest when you need to rest. <clears throat> All right, guys, another question. Three more left. This is the first one of the last three. It's from Berserker. He says, how would I add in training with chains? I have a pair of 30-pound chains I inherited recently, but don't really know how to use them. What should I do? Um, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but chains can be good for bench, they can be good for deadlifts, and they can be good for squats. You can really approach it a couple different ways. One week train normally, one week with chains. Or you can go into the gym and do the heavy work because chains can be overloading on the top end. You can go into the gym, do your chain work, and then drop down. Just do your regular work without the chains. You want a little bit both. Or you can go into your regular work and then finish off with chains. So it's really up to you. But the real key here is if you use chains, I recommend doing work with them and work without them each week or every other week. All right, guys, two questions left. This one is from Mr. Lipton. He says, what do you think of Strong Lifts 5x5 five five as a muscle building program? All right, guys, um, what do I think of Strong Lifts 5x5? Five five? I'm going to be brutally honest uh, with you here. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't 
really care for minimalistic programs when it comes to muscle building. Yes, you can build muscle using only squats, deadlift, bench press, minimalistic programs. But if you are a beginner, I strongly recommend a more fleshed out full body workout. Um, you know, one, uh, like I said earlier, I'm a proponent of getting everything from head to toe as strong as possible. That way you're working every muscle group, including your bicepticons, your tricepticons, your trapticons. I want you to work every muscle group from head to toe, um, you know, and get them as strong as possible and big as possible. So minimalistic programs, we have a tendency in this era with the starting strength and with the star routines and with strong lifts to, to gravitate towards these minimalistic programs and they tend to be shoved on forums and on the internet as you're a beginner do this program. They're good programs. They're good programs. I personally, I personally, you, you can, you, if you work them hard you're going you're gonna to see results. But I personally want to see you do a few more exercises. I want to see you work some different areas guys. I don't like the minimalistic programs. I think um, you can do a workout, a full body workout that has six, seven exercises a day, um, you know, 20, 22 sets max. Um, that, uh, you know, I have one on muscle and strength uh, called the Muscle and Strength Full Body Workout. You can go to Ice Cream Fitness. He uh, has a good, or excuse me, Juggernaut Fitness. He has a good five by five, um, but it has a more fleshed out number of exercises. I personally recommend this type of program. I personally recommend this type of program, uh, one with a few more exercises per day. Uh, strong lifts and starting threes, they're good programs. I just don't personally like them. Uh, they're great for adding strength, okay, kids? Don't get me wrong. They're not bad programs. I just want to see you get, if you're in it for muscle building, even for strength building, I want you to get every muscle in the body as big and strong as possible. That's the way I do it. That's my way. Not hating on anybody else, but that's just my system. More exercises, more size, kids. Hit your traps, hit your shoulders, hit your back, hit your quads, hit your hamstrings. You don't have to do a ridiculous amount of volume, just a smart amount of volume, but I'd like to see you do a few more exercises each week than just the minimalistic stuff. Now, one more point about strong lifts, guys, is that it has you, there's a couple things I really don't care for. I really don't care for. Starting with the bar, um, you, you can't learn form with the bar, guys. I, I respect Mady or whatever his name is. Um, but you can't learn form when there's not a good amount of weight on your back. You need some pressure pushing you down. This doesn't mean you start heavy right away as a beginner or a novice, but you at least need some weight that you know it's there. So I don't like starting with the bar. Um, I think that's uh, a little bit fringe. I think it's a little bit left field. Um, most of you guys could survive starting with 95 or 135 pounds if you're extremely, extremely novice. Um, I also don't see any need for five sets of squats three times a week. I think that's obsessive. I think it's going to catch up to you real quick. Starting strength um, is a little more reasonable, I believe. Three sets of five three times a week or whatever it is. Even like the uh, mad cow that's uh, you know ramping and lighter and all that kind of stuff. It has some periodization, some HLM heavy light medium days. I don't like three sets of five adding weight every week, every week. <clears throat> that is linear progression. It works. It's just not like what I like. I like you to go in, say you have three sets of squats. I like to advocate three to four sets of squats on Monday, three to four sets of squats on Friday, and you're aiming for as many reps as possible in that set, um, not pushing to failure and stopping the sets when you feel like your form's going to pot. So I want you to I want it to be auto-regulated. Say you're doing 150 pounds on squats and you do four sets and you hit 35 total reps one week. And you go on the next rep, uh, you know, next week and you hit 37 reps. You know, you push it and you, you're able to gain a couple more reps on those four sets of your squats. This is, this is auto-regulated regulated progression. You're trying to build as your body allows, just not adding five pounds on week in and week out. If you do that on strong lifts and you're squatting five sets a week, three times a week, 
it'll likely catch up to you, and it'll become brutally hard. Uh, uh, you know, it'll seem easy, easy, uh, and all of a sudden, bam, 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 bam. So it's not my favorite type of program. That's as honest as I can be, guys. As honest as I can be. It, it will work if you work it. Nearly anything works, guys. Nearly anything works. But it, for me, it's it's not my choice for novices. It just simply isn't for those reasons. Not enough muscle building stuff. Too many sets of squats. It has linear progression, which is not my favorite. I like auto-regulated progression. And it gets really butt hard really quick. And um, that can be not fun. So, all right, guys. Last question. Last question is from Peppin E Cookie. Peppin E Cookie. Peppin E Cookie. What is the best place to learn good squat form? Well, um, it's there. I can tell you this. There's not a lot of guys on the internet that know good squat form. I hate to tell you this, guys. I'm not being a hater. But when I watch bodybuilders, particularly bodybuilders, the bodybuilding or muscle building community do squats, it's usually knees in stuff, it's half squats, not deep enough. Not a lot of these guys seem to have the internet, no disrespect meant, but they don't seem to be studying squat form. So if you're in the muscle building realm, I would be very careful with the bodybuilders and muscle heads. Um, or teaching you squats because there's a good and I'm not saying all I'm not generalizing but 90% of the videos I see from bodybuilders and muscle heads their squats are horrible so I'd be very careful who you choose in that realm as far as personal trainers you got to be really careful you got to be really careful the, the people that really know how to squat and I've been around I was in body I was a bodybuilder and muscle head for 21 years I've only been a power lifter since that time so I've been in both worlds, and I am still in both worlds with my job. So the guys that really know squat form are the advanced power lifters. Those are really the guys you want to learn squat form from. I recommend trying to learn conventional stance squats first. That's just my personal preference. They're a little bit easier than wide stance. Wide stance are a little more complicated and harder to learn. So if you're a beginner, you're unsure about squat form, Seek out powerlifting squat form videos on the internet from like Elite FTS or uh, you can come over to the forum. We have a video compilation section um, that shows you how to, that has some really good quality stuff on how to squat. One of the best ways to learn how to squat is to take your camera into the gym, film yourself normally from the side and from the front so we can see your feet and knees and post your video here on the link below my forum Q&A, post your video, and you'll have guys like me who was close to a 700-pound natural raw squatter, uh, or raw squatter. You'll have uh, Jonathan Berta, who's a good friend of mine. He'll be competing at the Arnold. <clears throat> he's a great teacher, and he's going to be squatting close to 1,100 pounds, guys, but he's, he's a geared squatter, but he can squat well, well, well over what I can raw. We have all kinds of guys like that over at the forum. So the best way to learn squat form is to record your squats on video from the side and from the front so we can see your feet and knees and your upper body. Come over to the forum, post them, and have us guys critique them. We've got tons of guys that squat over 500 pounds, so we'd be glad to help you out. So guys, I hope this video has been of some help. It's been a long video, but I enjoyed answering your questions. If you have any questions or comments about strength training, muscle building, diet, nutrition, supplementation, or motivation, there is a link below to a forum Q&A. Come on over, ask me any questions you want. I'd be glad to help you out. So, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.